So, a warm welcome to this webinar from uh, me, Jim Tanburn. I work in the DCD Secretariat, and uh, I'm just doing a brief introduction while people are joining. A lot of people have already joined, which is fantastic. Um, we're recording this webinar, and the recording will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. And otherwise, let me just say a few words about the background of the standard, which came out of a strategy process of the DCD Donor Committee for Enterprise Development um, members in about 2006, 2007, where the one thing everyone agreed on was the need to do more on measuring results. Um, and at the time, the question was, well, where can we add value? Because evaluation is a crowded field. And the answer was monitoring, good monitoring practice. So the standard for results measurement was born in 2008 and continues to go from strength to strength. Essentially, it calls on projects to articulate the logic of, of what they're planning and then to check as things go ahead, whether they're unfolding the way that they hoped it, they would. Anyway, let's get on to practical experience. It's a great pleasure to introduce Flora and Julian from the Enhancing Youth Employment Project in Kosovo. But first, my colleague from the Secretariat, Nobonita, is going to give a quick overview of what the standard is for those who are coming here for the first time. Nobonita, over to you. Thank you, Jim, for giving us the background. Um, we thought that we'll take a moment to maybe run you through the agenda for the day and also give you a bit of a background on the DCD standard and what sort of resources we have available from the DCD in, to support programs in implementation of the standard. Um, in terms of the agenda, as Jim mentioned, I'll just run you through the standard and then we will hand over to our guests from iKosovo who will talk talk to you about their practical experience in applying the standard, how they prepared for it, and the experience gained so far. And then we will go into a Q&A section. Um, feel free to use this opportunity to, to ask your questions regarding um, actual implementation of the standard, what it entails, and how to prepare for it. And we would encourage you to use the Q&A section um, to do that. So uh, Jim gave you a background on the standard. Um, Ella, if you can please move on to the next slide. Just to tell you maybe what the standard is about, if you're not, in case you're not familiar with it, the DCD standard is a seven part framework. As uh, Jim mentioned, it is basically, it gives you the different founding blocks that that a program needs to apply in place to um in place to have a solid monitoring base in place so if we could if we could summarize the standard you can summarize it in three different chunks the first one is about setting out the vision for what you're trying to do so this you can do by articulating a theory of change or results chain which basically shows the steps um the activity steps that you will undergo and as a result of that what are the different uh, tiers of change that a pro program is trying to achieve once you have that, then you check progress against it. So this would be about by defining indicators that allow you to measure those changes that are articulated in the results chain, and then basically uh, thinking through about a measure measurement plan, which allows you to measure those different steps in the results chain. And then finally, the framework um, talks about the ways that you can um, use that approach in order to check whether things are on progress and uh, manage adaptively in your project. So it's about basically tracking costs and results um, to make sure that you get that balance between what is input in, in the project and what results you get in, and then uh, reporting those together so that you have that, uh, you, you have that overview in place. And then finally, it talks about like, you know, uh, making sure there's a system in place in, in order to reflect on the results achieved and use that in order to, um, uh, in order to improve the project. So the real, uh, where the real monitoring gets in. Um, Ella, if you can move on to the next slide. 
In terms of application of the standard, we have uh, over 150 projects which are using uh, standards in across 50 countries. These um, these projects are using it in uh, in in different uh, sectors, ranging from agricultural to informal markets, financial inclusion, skills development, etc. We also have a map of the standard, which is available on the DCD website. If you click on it, you can see who are the different projects that are applying it. We hope this also allows programs to see um, who are the different projects which will which may be like working in common sectors or across the region um, in case um, in case you want to connect with other programs across the region or like we're working in the same areas um if you can move on to the next slide please Ella. What the standard, um, what we also have with the standard is an option for getting audited. So this is again, uh, this is optional. Uh, if you are, if a program chooses to apply the different elements of the standard, you can get an objective assessment against it. So we have auditors who are um, who are credited to do such an audit to see if a, if a program is applying the standard based on which they. Um, based on which they can give you a pass or a fail. Um, this optional element allows the programs to, again, uh, add to their credib credibility. So, you know, if you're seeing that you're applying this, uh, if you're if you're seeing that you're applying the standard to get that external check for the credibility. Um, so far, we've had 31 uh, audits conducted and programs have shared um, positive experiences. Often, we've also seen programs who have gotten an audit also go for a repeat audit or programs uh, with staff who have moved on to different projects who have again like gotten this audit because they have had this positive experience. Um, in terms of the audit also there is this option of like uh, whenever a program um, uh, decides to go for an audit we always suggest them to go for a pre-audit review first which is also something which i uh, um, which i will talk to you about because they have gotten this pre-audit review and this is really done a bit more informally but again uh, again, with consultants who are familiar with the standard to check um, how far they are in the process and give them recommendations in terms of like how to go for the um, full audit if they are interested in doing so. If you can move on to the next slide, please, Ella. In terms of the resources on the standard, we have a couple of different things on the uh, website which are available and Ella will also share these in the chat box for you. We have a toolkit on the uh, DCD standard. This really talks about like how do you uh, make a results chain, a measurement plan, um, how to make a research plan once you want to go for actual um, collection of data. We have a lot of case studies which are around different thematic, um, uh, different different themes and also like up, uh, on application in different sectors which give examples of like how the standard is applied in real life. We have guidance nodes which are structured around the different elements of the standard. So, you know, uh, how do you make results chains? How do you make measurement plans? How do you measure systemic change? Um, and we also have audit pass notes which tell you a bit more about like the scoring, you know, what are the things that we look for when we talk about the different elements of the standard and what exactly you're scored against. We also have recordings of webinars, past webinars in the in our YouTube channel where you can also find more, ex, more examples of how different programs are applying it, what they have learned, etc. Um, and in addition to that, we also have, um, uh, Ella, if you can move on to the next slide, please. Um, other resources that we have available are, as I already mentioned, we have this map of uh, programs applying the standard. Again, if you're you if you want to connect to somebody who is um, who is from a similar country, who is from a similar region, or applying things in the standard, you can use that map to see which programs are applying the standard. We have a sample size calculator which uh, allows you to plug in um, the population for whom you want to uh, you want to collect data on and to um, to 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 come up with a credible sample size for it. We have a consultants marketplace where we um, where we have the uh, information on different consultants who can help a program in terms of applying the standard. We, um, we, as I mentioned before, there is also DCD also helps you to organize an audit if you are, um, if you are interested in getting this external validated. We have a, uh, we have a list of um, 
uh, auditors who can do this. So again, uh, we, the DCD Secretariat is available to coordinate that. And we're also available for online um, advice. So we often have also, if you have a specific question related to application of the standard, or if you're looking for a particular um, resource, we are always available. You can contact us and we will try to direct you um, towards necessary resources. So with this, I am going to hand it over to um, my colleagues at um, uh, I, at I, we have uh, Flora and we have Julian Peach who will talk about their experience in um, applying the standard in I program. Flora, over to you. Yes, Nabanita, thank you. Uh, I think you can see my screen now. Yes, it's good. Yes, we can. OK, thank you. OK, thank you, Nabanita, for giving us space uh, and opportunity to tell the ICE journey related to the pre-audit review. Uh, for those who are hearing for the first time about I, uh, the picture is uh, from a career center in the uh, city of Jakova here in Kosovo that I facilitated the establishment. And it's obvious that it's a career center staffed with uh, students uh, having a session. Uh, okay, I'm gonna continue my next slide uh, with some context information about the Kosovo and the country where we operate. So uh, Kosovo is the newest country in Europe um, with the young, youngest population. It is a part of uh, Western Balkan countries and it's neighboring with Albania, North Macedonia, Montenegro, and Serbia. Uh, based on the latest uh, data from the World Bank, Kosovo is, Kosovo's econom economic growth in the past decade has uh, outperformed its neighbors and has largely been inclusive. Uh, however, it has not been uh, sufficient enough to provide uh, enough formal jobs, for, particularly for uh, young uh, Kosovar women. So um, to continue growth, Kosovo definitely needs to unleash its potential um, in creating priorities, prioritizing first the human capital investments and create um, an environment which is uh, suitable for the develop development of the private sectors. Uh, so some of the sectors with growth, growth potential in Kosovo are identified as ICT, food processing industry, uh, and energy with a focus on uh, green energy and uh, creative industry. So this is basically uh, just a context information on the country where we operate. So, okay, who we are. Uh, Enhancing Youth Employment, or I, uh, is an SDP project. Uh, we have been lucky to implement our project uh, in cooperation with Helvetas and the local partner MDA, who have been a great support to the project since the beginning back in 2013. And they have been uh, our biggest support through our different uh, milestones that the project has been going through. So while the final goal of the project is that young women and men, and especially those disadvantaged, uh, have, our, uh, have access to employment or, and are uh, socially, uh, they are included in, a, they benefit from different employment opportunities uh, in a sustainable way. Uh, unfortunately, Kosovo faces the, lo uh, the longest uh, transition period period from school to work. And lack of experience is uh, considered as a hidden, uh, how to say hidden germ that, that, um, that affects this transition uh, gap, which is quite, quite large. Uh, however, I, throughout its uh, project implementation, uh, tried to tackle this, how to say, mismatch between uh, on a youth employment, uh, working in two interrelated areas. So first, the uh, skills component, uh, working in skills component with non-formal training providers and industry leaders, uh, facilitating them to offer uh, relevant and affordable uh, training to youth under the assumption that they will be able to uh, get employed or self-employed. 
And on the other side, working with uh, career guidance and job mediation services so that they will be able to facilitate this transition uh, from school to work and enabling you to get informed uh, career choices on, uh, on the labor uh, market. So this is a slide of who we are shortly. Uh, my next slide uh, shows you the history of I. So uh, I try to illustrate uh, through the photos. So back in 2012, it was our inception phase. Uh, and uh, then basically it's a project of 12 years that has been divided in three phases. Uh, currently we are in the last phase uh, of our project or as we call it exit phase. Uh, while the main goal of the project has been the same, like youth employment, of course, throughout the years, uh, there were some interventions, that some areas that have been dropped. Uh, however, the general goal of the project remains the same, and the methodology that the project uses, uh, MSD project, also remains the same. Uh, in terms of the team, of course, there have been rotations, uh, that's normal, uh, but I must say that uh, for important uh, components of the work, uh, that the project works, uh, we still have um, the team who has been in the project since the beginning, and I must say that they are also a great asset to, to the project. So, okay, the, this slide is obvious. Uh, monitoring and results measurement at I has a central, uh, central role in the project implementation, which was initially developed and maintained based on DCD standards. So since, two, since 2013, the project has been um, using uh, monitoring data for uh, decision-making, steering and learning. The system is uh, well aligned with uh, MSD approach that the project initially committed to deliver. So during the project lifetime, and as Nabanita mentioned, uh, we undertook two, this, uh, two pre-audit reviews, one uh, back in 2016 and the other in 2022. So the both uh, reviews have been conducted by the same consultant, Picha. Uh, and uh, it was a great learning experience. So the aim that we undertook too is basically to learn and to improve ourselves and sp specifically related to the monitoring and results measurement. And I can say that it pays off uh, because uh, especially the intervention managers who their main role is uh, in creating partnerships. Uh, they, I must say that they now have uh, the sense of not responsibility, but they feel also having a role of an ownership towards their results and measurement uh, system. So it's uh, all familiar to them when you talk about attribution, counterfactual, and all these elements that MRM system has. So it's been a great learning exercise. Uh, the Next slide shows um, preparation for pre-audit review. And I would like to stop here a little bit more because I think it's very important that we all agree at I that the preparation is a uh, key uh, for the pre-audit review. Uh, so how I did it is that uh, after the, actually beginning of the uh, third phase, uh, we, uh, engaged the consultant, Ali, who I don't know if this is the audience, I saw her in the registration list. I would like to greet her. Um, she was uh, engaged actually to update and have a training to the I team on uh, MRM. And uh, so of course her report gave also some recommendations which of course needed for improvement. And so basically that was our starting point. Uh, we took the Alice report as the first thing and together with it, we developed detailed action plan based on standard past notes that Nabatnita, you mentioned. Um, and uh, so, yeah, basically uh, it all started with an action plan, detailed action plan that uh, me as an MR MRM team and also the management uh, and the person who replaced me because during this time I was in maternity leave uh, had to stick to this working plan. So, and we also engaged an external reviewer who has been uh, engaged to, during the old preparation process, 
so basically we as a team went through a pre-audit review prior to going to that uh, to the real one which happened then uh, in, uh, in September. Uh, at the same time, Helvetas had a great contribution to it because they have been also a great support back with their backstopping during this preparation process. And yeah, the whole preparation process took like six months altogether. Yeah, it was a great, a long time, but, uh, and even it took longer than anticipated, but at the same time, of course, we had partnerships that had to keep running. And uh, so, but nevertheless, the majority of the time was dedicated to preparation. Uh, I would like to give you some tips on preparation process because I think it's very important for all of all those who plan to have to have one. So first thing is feel free to ask those who went through the journey. I think this is very important and it can be a great lift for the team. Uh, exchanging with those who went through the journey can be a great boost for the team and it can be a very great exercise. Second, uh, try to establish a culture, culture of honesty within the team uh, without being judgment, uh, judgmental. Of course, some intervention managers might be more advanced and have a more, let's say, rigid uh, process of documentation. Others might not be, but it's not a moment to criticize. It's a process of having open discussion and not judging anyone. And the third is very, very important. I'm gonna mention it later into detail, but uh, collecting evidence can be nervous, can, can cause nervousness to the team because uh, while the projects should collect evidence throughout uh, all the project phases and all the time, uh, some interruptions might leave that you have to go then back to the partners and ask for the evidence so that you are in line with the DCD uh, standards. So it just requires patience. So what are the findings from the DCD pre-audit review? Uh, it has been determined that the um, project uh, has a robust uh, system in place since 2013. The report also received that the I uh, system is compliant with the DCD in most of aspects and only a few like minimal aspects in this improvement and that is completely normal. Uh, this demonstrates a strong, a strong commitment of the team and uh, the management to ensuring accountable and tra transparency of, uh, of the data that we have. Uh, it is very, it is very important that uh, to mention the consistency that needs to to happen within the team. So consistency of tracking and back, back, backing up all the reports with the evidence. Uh, this project scored better in the second review by improving the recommendation from the first review. Um, okay, as I said in 2016, there was one uh, pre audit review which we undertook. And the second one, uh, of course, we took into consideration the recommendations from the first one and improved the second one. So basically, this, these are the like the main findings. Uh, so recommendations from the DCD um, are, in, I put it them in two points. First, it's important that the projects enhance the system to utilize information for KML. So what does this mean in our case? It means that all the different researches that we do and all the different relevant information that we have in disposal, uh, how to compile them so that they can be uh, of use for the further research. So they can be a kind of a foundation to do further analysis. So this is the first one. The second one is uh, explore the feasibility of options to isolate like other influencing factors, like attribution, uh, unintended effects and counterfactual. So um, how, to, how we can attribute the results to the, to the project and how we can isolate either factors and then attribute all the results to the project. So basically these were like the two main points uh, that we can draw and uh, I must say that attribution uh, in a donor crowded market remains a challenge and that's, that's also our case, but we try to, to measure it, not ignore it and do our best to have a, a, a backup of our uh, attribution system. 
what we did after the pre-audit review. Okay, first thing first, we went back to our partnerships, which were waiting and uh, of course uh, they were kind of left on hold during the protest. And uh, in terms of the recommendations, we conducted a contribution analysis uh, for skills component with non-formal training providers. So basically the idea was to measure the impact that we had in non-formal training providers, not only in output and activity level, but to see like what are the changes in systemic level that we, that we made. Like for example, uh, so we made a comparison of uh, our partners and non-partners. So the idea was to understand, uh, would they still have the same results with or without ICE report? And I must say that the research revealed very uh, interesting uh, data and it, it even validated some of our assumptions that we had. But uh, now that we have it like a backup with an evidence of a report, it is, uh, it is much more valid, I would say. And of course, uh, we try to, uh, we, try, we will try to replicate the same method methodologies or similar methodologies throughout all the international areas. Uh, as I said in the very beginning, I uh, is the last phase, it's an exit phase, so we are going to put um, much more emphasis on the um, on the measurement measuring systemic change. Lessons from pre-audit review. Uh, okay, I tried to to wrap them up uh, in the points. So the first thing is that we definitely pay greater attention to collecting evidence and storing it properly. As I mentioned before, this is very, very important. And this should be done throughout all the project life cycle by intervention managers and of course, with the support of MRM. Uh, second, we collect evidence about attribution of the results that we achieved to our activities. Third, we took the courage to have two pre-audit reviews and that was mainly for the learning purposes. Uh, and it's especially you feel like more credible when you know that uh, somebody else is validating what you're saying and what, what uh, you possess. And the fourth one, we focus more our measurement on, uh, as I said, systemic ch change and not just activity and output. So as I said, so this year and remaining year is going to be all about like mainly about measurement and consolidating our knowledge and learning throughout um, all these years. Um, so I'm going to hand over the presentation to Julian, our project director, who is going to give a few words on the managerial perspective on the journey of pre-audit review. Great. Julian? Thank you. Thank you, Laura, and uh, welcome everybody. Great to see so many people in the audience. Uh, I'll make six points about um, our assessment from the managerial view, and I hope you find them useful. The first one is that we have some accountability to the Swiss taxpayers to be honest and to do a good job. Uh, after all, they give us money, uh, Swiss taxpayers give us money, so we are accountable to them and to the organization, Swiss government, that channels that money to us. And we found that the standard helps us to maintain that accountability. Uh, we're now able to say that we've been externally uh, reviewed, and we have some confidence that the results that we are reporting are accurate and true. Let's recognize for a minute that not everybody does that. Some projects make up stories or they sort of expand the benefits that they're claiming. Um, and we don't want to do that. Uh, we have to consider things like the counterfactual. We have to collect and store evidence of change that is attributable to the activities that we've done in our interventions. And then we don't just have to claim that, we are able to have an external review that says, I've looked at it, I've checked it, and it is true. So the DCED standard keeps us honest, and that's important. Secondly, um, we're proud of our work, um, but doing the standard is, is, is hard. And if we say to intervention managers, you know, you've got to upgrade your intervention guide, you've got to improve the file management, you have to do this, the donor wants us to do it, um, it's considered to be so that we meet the standard, well then people are not going to be very motivated, motivated by that. Uh, instead, what we do is instead point towards a brighter and better future. And we say, 
you know, let's try and do the best we can. Um, let's aim to be better. Completing the pre-audit review will help us to be more proud of our work. We will know what we have achieved. We'll be able to state that with some confidence and there'll be proof it's not just made up. And at the start of each intervention, much of the vision is a nervous, anxious aspiration. And there are times when we're not sure that the interventions will work. But now we have someone external to the project assessing the way we measure results and declaring our results to be reliable. So as a manager, what we've, I've tried to do is to encourage the team to stand tall, to be proud of their work, and then to do the work that is required to, to meet the standard and to then take the credit for it with some confidence. That's a much nicer way of encouraging people to uh, change their way of working to meet the standard. Um, we nearly had a disaster at the beginning of this review process. Uh, we knew that Vlora would be taking maternity leave for the months preceding the pre-audit review. How would we get through this without having an MRM specialist in our team? And there's only a slim chance of finding an interim six month manager with the skills and attitude to find the gap. So we were looking at a bit of a disaster about to happen. So we were lucky and a big shout out to Ander Dika who's in the audience uh, who joined the team as an interim manager and did a great job preparing the intervention managers, working her magic on the Excel sheets and answering the questions by Pitcher, our reviewer during the review. Uh, as a result of that, we've started to realize that we should no longer rely on one person in the team to be our MRM experts, to be our guru or fundi. We're all skilled now and we're all interested in measurement. Next slide. Uh, three points here. Other projects play by other rules. It's hard to be so rigorous when all around us other, project, other projects are measuring in a loose way. They have no standard to adhere to, although DCED has established the standard and it's been used in many places. It's not the standard for all MSD projects. And I wish it really was because development would be done better. And if we were all playing by the same rules, it would be easier to talk to our intervention partners about why we are so rigorous. Um, because when we talk to our intervention partners, they're a little less, um, uh, they, they don't understand why we're being so careful about counterfactual or unintended effects or attribution. Uh, what would have happened uh, if we had not done the review? And what would have been the consequences? Well, we would have not prepared so diligently and not taken the challenge of the standard seriously. We would have received the long report and ignored it. The consequences of that would be, I guess, I would be standing in front of the SDC, Swiss Cooperation Office, and they'll be asking me questions, trying to explain why we're so far from the standard, which would be difficult and embarrassing for me. That wouldn't have been fun. But also, we would not have noticed the indirect systemic results of our facilitation, and we would not have measured them. So going through this process has helped us to realize more about the systemic effect that we're having and to then measure that and to report it. We would not have been able to share those indirect effects with our project partners who can make use of it. And we would not have identified gaps in our intervention design, for example, on inclusion and made improvements. Our development impact would have been less. So as one of the managers guiding this process, I would say that whilst the standard does require management attention, the gain of improved performance is well worth it. If you're uncertain about the standard and you're not sure what to do, start with a friendly pre-audit review. It's a great way to get a, an easy assessment. It's an interactive learning process. It's not an inspection and it will improve project performance. And it's totally confidential to the project. Final comment is about raising our game. Um, try to support good practice in your organization. We're grateful for the support we received from Helotas colleagues in our regional office, Nikola Babic. Uh, we'll be on the Q&A panel later to help answer questions. If you're at a senior level in your organization, there are several things you can do to help project staff to enhance their performance in results measurement. You can establish a community of practice. You can use peer support processes to share know-how. You can use collaborative software like MS Teams to help each other to succeed and enjoy their work. And to establish management procedures to get knowledge into action. Don't just leave it all for the projects to do. Work together to get that success. And here are some 
folk dancers in Kosovo who are working together to get that success. I hope that's helpful for you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Julian. Um, so this is basically the end of our uh, story. This is a picture of uh, IT, all the team that has been working hard on the pre audit review and together with the country support team. This is a picture of us taken in uh, Albania during a staff retreat. So I hand it over to you, Nabanita, for further comments. Many thanks, Flora and Julian, for walking us through this journey. Flora, thank you for like uh, sharing all the details of like how you went about the process, how you prepared and the findings and changes you took as a result of that. And thank you, Julian, for giving us the bigger picture scenario of uh, overall learnings. I think that was very useful for um, we, we also wanted to point you out towards a blog post, uh, post that has been written by Vlora, which talks about this pre-audit experience. Ella has um, posted that on the chat box. If you're interested, please have a look at it. It really talks through the details of this entire process. It's a very interesting read. Um, I will now open the floor for questions, and we have a couple of them come up. So we have on our panel, we have, along with Vlora and Julian, we also have Albina, who uh, who is also from I, uh, to talk about, to take in questions about your experience. And we also have uh, Nicola Bavik, who joins us from um, Helvetas to talk about the overall um, uh, agency-wide approach towards uh, results measurement. So I will go through the questions one by one. The first one, I think, uh, from Manuela has been partially uh, answered already by Julian. She talks about what made you decide for the DCD audit. So maybe if you want to uh, point us towards like what was the main reason, in addition to all the things that you have lined up, what was the key thing that probably drove you towards doing it? Who's answering this question? Uh, Julian, I would throw that to you and Albina, perhaps, or? Albina, go for it. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, as Gloria explained in the presentation, it was for learning purposes, and it was very closely aligned also with our uh, donor organization, in this case, SDC. So we had it planned. Let's say when we did the project document for phase three, we already knew that we would do a pre-audit review in third phase and it was uh, for learning and improving purposes that was the major drive and i think it has reached objectives as Laura and Julian explained we did some improvements in our system we the way we document uh, evidence the way we analyze things the way we um, uh, we review actually interventions it has changed so that was the biggest impact in our internal process Julian, do you want to add on top of? This? No, it's great. Um, if anybody's not sure, just give it a go. Um, you're bound to learn something, and it might appear to be difficult. But the reference earlier to the past notes, the toolkits, there's a lot of information that guides you through it. It's very easy. I know That's that. a great tagline, Julian. Give it a go. Yeah, give it a go. Um, we have a question from Edward, and um, I might ask you to unmute yourself and also explain this. You're, you say your question is linked to the government role. Um, how important is this for the government? Are there some policies supporting youth employment? So I think you're talking more in line of um, uh, the actual implementation of the project. Is Do I get, get that correctly? Did you want to understand that? I can you hear me? Yeah. 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 We can hear you. Okay. No, no. I think you are you are right. This is exactly what, what I meant when I was asking that question. And uh, we know that the government policy are very important. And then in a framework where we where you want to work, where we want to implement the project. So I was just referring uh, about those those policies which which should be in place to be able to attract also the uh, the stakeholder to be able to be part of the project to own the project. That's that, that's what type of details I just wanted to 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 have. Thank you. 
I'll reply. Um, yeah, it's very important for the government uh, in this country. The government has chosen jobs and justice as its two um, priorities, and it's being held to account every day by the citizens, uh, either on the streets or in the parliament. Uh, businesses are also very interested in jobs and justice. So our project working on uh, youth employment is very relevant for government. And in some of our interventions, we partner directly with the government, some indirectly, some directly. So it's an important point. Thank you, Julian. Um, we have another follow-up question from Manuela on how long does a DCED audit take? Um, I'm guessing, Manuela, you're asking in terms of like the actual duration of how long it takes to do the pre-audit review, or are you talking more in terms of the preparation for it? Um, in terms of, um, I think like... I can answer maybe in yeah, both yeah. in both uh, cases. So the preparation takes time, but also that depends on your readiness to go for DC the audit, and uh, depends how much time and resources you can put on it. In our case, it took six months, even though this was the second one. And uh, uh, while the actual audit it may take two weeks, because what happens is that you send documents to the consultant. He reviews and then he interviews uh, individually intervention managers, MRM manager on separate uh, meeting, uh, mid-level management team leadership and wants to get this uh, and will collect information from all sides. So it's also about interpreting what you have submitted and ability to understand, ability to, um, to show your uh, measurement system your review process and how meaningful it is for the team. So I would say that takes around two weeks and then maybe a week or two for consultant to have a report. The report goes with control points. In a, in a pre-audit review, it goes with each control point, they give a comment. It says green or yellow, red, or if it's yellow but has, needs some improvement, it gives a comment. It says, like, yeah, it has very good result chain, but maybe naming of files needs some consistency or something like that, or uh, evidence needs to be stored better. So it, the preparation takes more time. The actual pre-audit review, two to three weeks, I would say. But yeah, you need yeah. to plan ahead, so. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe just to add to Albina, I, I think we've seen different iterations of uh, this, how the pre-audit review taken place. Pe people have done it in person. We've seen people do it in um, uh, remotely as well. So I think it is ultimately to decide on with a consultant on how to uh, how to do the pre-audit review. And I think I would also like to make a distinction between there are these, um, when you apply the DCD standard, you do have that choice for going for a pre-audit review, which is really to go against the compliance criteria and then give you qualitative mm -hmm. feedback in terms of how far you are in application of it. And then there is the more formal audit, which is only done by DCD accredited auditors. That's a much more formal process where the process, uh, where the scoring, where there's actual scoring and the scoring itself is reviewed by a panel that is convened by DCD. And then that is uh, formally again shared with the project. Okay, in our case, we all did remotely. Consultant was not even based. So we sent document, documentation through different collaboration platforms and it worked well. So you can reduce time, you can reduce cost, but the preparation, of course, is uh, in the office. And uh, yes, we did not go for full audit because as I said, we wanted to learn from this and we felt that we'll have the same purpose at the end. So if it's about learning, pre-audit should work. And uh, that was kind of uh, the motivation for I. Right. Thank you for that, Alvina. Um, we have a question on Edwina, uh, Edwino on what, um, when during the program life is the most appropriate for a DCD audit. Maybe this is something also, Julian, you can uh, answer. I think like in our experience, we've seen programs in different uh, sorts of stages, uh, starting from like when they have uh, began a project and just established uh, results chains and not really done the uh, full-fledged impact assessment. So uh, from the DCD perspective, I think we've seen it through the lifeline of a project. Um, Julian, if you sure. want to add to that. Yeah. I, I'd say not, not super early in the project period because people are 
rightly focused upon uh, understanding the market systems, uh, developing partnerships with market actors, and trying to build up a sense that change is going to happen. Um, the, the opportunity to learn about the standard is all there for us, so we can serve ourselves and we, there's lots of information, so you can be almost in a managerial process, you can be prepared and understanding the standard without having a review. Um, so I would say if you're a five-year project, then year two or year three is fine. If you're a 10-year project, then year four or year three. What I wouldn't do is run a project and establish um, structures and cultures that are incorrect. And then in year, towards in the last phase of the project, then say, oh, let's have a pre-audit review. So I'm sure we're doing very well. And then you get a surprise. So earlier before midterm, and uh, I know that remember, part of this is about internal learning and another aspect is external accountability. You'll have a lot easier time with your funder if they trust what you're telling them. And an external review will help build that credibility. Thank you for that, Julian. We also have a follow-up question from um, Befakadu on how you're planning to use the result of the audit. I think you've touched upon this a bit, uh, but maybe if you would like to elaborate on that, um, particularly because the project is in the, is in the final stage of implementation. Flora, do you want to say something about that? Because you had a slide on it. Flora, you need to unmute. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Uh, yes, uh, that's true. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, we will be focusing on, uh, of course, measuring mostly in systemic level, uh, having our deeper analysis around systemic level, because that's what uh, also our donor is asking us. And uh, it's also normal and organic that after uh, so many years uh, that we try to report and uh, do our measurements on a systemic level. Uh, and it will be mainly also about consolidating uh, all our learning and uh, measurements as well. So uh, I understand Befekadu, sorry if I, I hope I uh, pronounced okay, but uh, yeah, we will just use our focus on measuring mainly on a systemic level. Thanks for, for that, Laura. I, I hope that was helpful. Thanks. Um, we have another question from Elvis, which I think is more directed towards DCD. So Jim, uh, feel free to also join me in answering this. Um, the question is whether, um, other than the useful resources we have on the DCD website, whether there is a tool where you can plug in the current status based on control points and whether it can generate an audit um, output. Um, I think this is something actually, this is a question which has been um, often uh, raised and we've tried to actually address this with the audit pass notes where we go into the details of scoring, how it's scored. Um, I would like to emphasize that one of the reasons that we have deliberately refrained from uh, making a tool which really gives a score, it's because really this audit is uh, more of an art rather than a science. I think during an auditor, every uh, consultant that we've had or like auditors who um, give the score, there, there has been a lot of thinking in terms of like what resources are available, how have choices been made, is it the best uh, choice given the uh, circumstances of a project. So there is um, a, a lot of things are taken into consideration when um, giving the scores and thinking through how different uh, elements have been um, implemented. To give you a particular example, um, if there has been a um, impact assessment plan and because of a conflict going on or for some, some other reason, a certain choice has been made to uh, minimize the measurement effort, we do obviously take that into consideration, which is very difficult to uh, plug in into an automatic scoring. So that's why we have refrained from having such a calculator. But as I said, we do have the um, audit pass notes, which really talk about like how each of the different compliance criteria against the um, uh, against the control points will be scored. I don't know, Jim, whether you would like to add anything to that. Uh, not really, Nominita. You gave a very thorough answer. We we actually did experiment with something like that, but it, it wasn't very popular in practice. It wasn't as popular as we thought it might be. Anyway. We can factor it in. There's another question in the chat from Michael Dawes. Yeah, 
I was just going to read that out. What are the costs involved while implementing the standard? Are donors uh, generally willing to pay for it? Is that something you would want to take, Alvina? Yeah. Um, in our case, yes, we pay through our MRM budget funded by donor, but uh, that, as I said, it has to be agreed in advance and it has to be well communicated. The costs are uh, 15 to 20 consultancy days for a reviewer. It may go more, but uh, these are without calculating the time that the team will spend in preparing. So I'm talking only about direct cost to the CD audit. And um, uh, I would add to what you commented earlier, Nabanita, about having a list of um, past notes uh, on, in front of you. you yes, you, if you have someone who has done this before or have good understanding of, of MRM, you can do it in-house before you go for the actual pre-audit review. And that's what we did. And Nicola is in the panel. In our case, Nicola did for iProject. He came, he sat down with the team for a week, and he basically put for each control point a comment. He thinks that this needs an improvement and this. And we did this twice, not only with Nicola. We also hired an external uh, guy who is not part of Helvetas because he had previous experience. Not everyone can do that. So even it's a very informal way. I don't think everyone can do it. Someone who has good sense of measurement and of the DCD standard could do it. And that, uh, if it's your colleague, it will not cost you much. If it's external, that it's up to you how much you're willing to, to pay and allocate resources for that. But that would be highly recommended as a process. Thanks for that, Albina. And I think in terms of uh, just general implementation of the standard, um, I think what the standard tries to outline, it's really the basic elements of like minimal good practices and results measurement that you should follow in order to uh, apply, uh, uh, in, in, in order to do good monitoring. So, you know, these things about like making a results chain or a monitoring plan or trying to attribute measure, uh, trying to um, measure attributable change. That is really like, um, it does not require a specific, um, uh, you know, a, a different a, additional cost as per se, it is really about designing a credible monitoring system within your project. So it is part of the um, uh, monitoring budget or the program management budget. Julian, you wanted to add something on it, that? Uh, two points. Um, often people think to be more thorough costs more money. No, it just requires you to be smarter. Um, and then the other is a suggestion that maybe Nicola can say something about what it was like from the organizational viewpoint to be supporting a project. Um, and how was that for him? We know he worked hard and we're grateful for that. But what was it like? Maybe I can add a little bit like, uh, I definitely, I can uh, repeat what Benita said, like for us, you know, I felt like that's actually uh, VCD standards are just a good management practice, and and I I believe actually it helps projects more than actually it's uh, like some kind of the burden, and uh, so for me I, I feel better when the project is uh, following the standard because I know that they are more aware of about uh, about their project, and I also realized while I was supporting I project that they are more aware of the information they have they start better using them. Uh, it's not just about administration, it's more about usage, uh, uh, better adaptive management, and uh, also being more aware of the results you're achieving, systemic change. And then, especially we are in specific uh, position that we are in third phase where we now need to consolidate many business models we introduced in Kosovo. It really helped us. And I think the team can, from my perspective, I saw that they realized it, that they I see improvement in what they are doing, what the I, I project is doing after the audit. I think that they did a good job even before. It was really good, like the way how actually they track most of the things, but with the preparation for audit, actually they just tune up, somehow become more aware of all this information. And uh, in, in, in case five, to be honest, like my, my mission was really enjoyable. It was very easy. Like uh, it was just a few days of, of uh, checking them, discussing about like what can be the purpose of the document, they, uh, what they can, why they should actually track this information, how they can use it in future. And, and it was more like a discussion. Actually, it was really fun to be honest because they were already prepared. And so with me, it was the last tune up for the, for the audit, uh, but 
from the organizational perspective, I need to admit, I don't care if they get the audit mark or not. I, I care only if they if they work better, if they if I see uh, better agility, better adaptive management, better results. And and, and I, I really, really believe, deeply believe that that this year following DCD standards really helps with this. Thank you, Nicola. That really summarizes it wonderfully. Um, do we have any more questions? I believe we have answered most of the questions that have come in. If not, then I would really like to take this opportunity to, to thank uh, I for the I team and also Nicola, who's part of that, to um, for sharing your experience. We really appreciate it, and also uh, particularly to you, Zora, for also taking the time to write a blog and sharing this, which I hope uh, people take the uh, chance to read because it really gives a very um, a good account of your experience, and it's a very nice read. Thank you. I hope it will be helpful for someone who will go under uh, the CD. Yeah, thank you all very much. Thank you everyone for joining and we'll be sending out a link to the recording to everyone who registered. Very uh, in-depth seminar. Thank you very much. I think this is a big goodbye from all of us then. Bye. 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 Good question.